Mumbai. As one of the world's most populous cities awakens, its limited resources are bracing for an onslaught. Today, the city will supply more than 3 billion liters of water to its citizens, who will in turn generate about 7,500 tons of waste. Its public transport will move 10 million people with just 3,500 buses and 200 trains at hand. The city is struggling to get its workforce in time to run India's financial capital. In the face of strained infrastructure and swelling population, Mumbai has to constantly find innovative solutions. And it has found one in an integrated township called Hiranandani Gardens, Kowai. The mega cities of the world show signs of order, structure and planning. But Mumbai is the poster child of a more organic form of development that experts think may be reaching its limits. Contrary to popular belief, Mumbai is not a maximum city. People say it's a maximum city, but I think that is a very finite statement. There's no scope for growth. I call it the ultimate settlement. This ultimate settlement is bracing for a new mass of people. Almost 70% of India still lives uh, in its villages, but that is going to dramatically change in the next you know, three to four decades where we will have almost 600 million people moving into our cities, making us a macro urban nation. As Mumbai becomes one of the most populous cities in the world, with the current resources as they are, the pressure on Mumbai is unimaginable. Mumbai really faces the pressure of the number of people per square foot or per uh, capita if you look at the space available to the city. By 2050, India will add two times the population of the United States of America to its cities. This is, you know, probably at the height of crisis. We, it's very hard to make sense of how the city of Mumbai is working with the extent of resource uh, crunch that it is in right now. To tackle the resource crunch, Mumbai has slowly reinvented itself. Over the decades, the city has invested in bridges, roads and other infrastructure. But it needed a new way of looking at the housing needs of the constantly changing demographic of the city. As the population of the city moved to the suburbs, a new opportunity arose. Nineties, the Indian uh, middle class became very vocal about their needs. You could see that and they were looking for their quality of life even in the way they lived every day. And as a direct reaction to this, you'd see the private sector start to develop. Uh, around that time and maybe a little before, integrated township that uh, were in some ways oasis within the city that would kind of provide some of those basic issues that were not available in the larger uh, metropolitan region. And you know, some of them succeeded, some of them not so much. Building integrated townships from scratch was one of the solutions. And one such township lies 32 kilometers from the city in the suburb of Puvai. The 4,000 families that live here wake up to fresh air, abundant spaces, and the chirping of birds. Mm -hmm. 
This self-contained community boasts its own schools, a 240-bed hospital, a business district, and all the amenities required for a good quality of life. All within a one-kilometer radius. This is a luxury that the rest of Mumbai's 18 million people rarely experience. Integrated townships like this are trying to tackle some of the infrastructural needs that the city is unable to provide. So we need a good implementation program which will take the city from a bad infrastructure to a great infrastructure. Niranjan Hiranandani is the older of the Hiranandani brothers who saw an opportunity in the mid-1980s for an integrated township. Well, first of all, you have to understand what, do, what does a human being need. He needs a good, comfortable house. He needs an area for his children to play or for him to have recreation. He needs education. He needs a hospital. All this can be provided in this great city. While Niranjan was the business brain, his younger brother was the engineering mind of the project. The value of a city is enormous. You know, civilization has progressed because of the intellectual thought which comes with so many people getting together. For Surendra, the integrated township was a way to reintroduce the concept of true community living. When we were in the 60s and till early 70s, Mumbai was a dynamo and in the Asian context at least. It had some great charm, great appeal, and that's how you got this flood of migrants coming into the city from between the 70s and the 90s. I mean, there must be a reason why people come here. When I was young, in the 50s and 60s, uh, the, the infrastructure of Mumbai was great, and we led very, very comfortable lives. Uh, the uh, going to school, which was five kilometers away, was no problem at all. Today, that would be extremely difficult to travel uh, because of the traffic and congestion. One of the major stumbling blocks to infrastructure development in Indian cities is attributed to the 1976 Urban Land Sealing Act. The government just kept harping along with activists that the city should be decongested. They didn't permit development in the city from the 70s to the 90s. They were, you were actually encouraged to shut down offices and go out into the countryside as if that is the way development should take place. But now people have realized that congestion is what is sustainable. But managing congestion in a city like Mumbai has its own challenges because of its topography. Mumbai was founded at the tip of an island facing the Arabian Sea and grew organically northwards through a series of reclamations. Unlike other mega cities of the world, Mumbai does not have a city center. Constrained by the Arabian Sea, it tapers down like a funnel. 40% of Mumbai's land has been reclaimed from the sea, and that too had reached its limits. The first step towards building an integrated township was to find a plot of land where the Hiranandanis could start from scratch. But land was scarce, even in the 1980s. The first time I looked at the uh, property, my ideas were utopian. You know, it will be a fair, you know, a fairy tale land in the in the sense that it would be beautiful. And uh, that, that was an aim, and we really wanted something large enough. We couldn't afford anything which is were closer to the city. After years of searching for the right piece of land, the Hiranandani brothers found a plot along the shores of a peaceful lake called Powai. When I first got here, it seemed very daunting. It was, it looked impossible because you just couldn't even get into the land. It was barren but denuded and quarried. It was, uh, you know, a very tough landscape. And you would, and anyone would wonder, you know, why would, should anyone live here? This was quarry land somewhere on the corner of Pawai, 
which I don't think anybody really noticed. If you ask anybody 30 years ago, they don't remember this part of Hawaii. The brothers bought 250 acres for their dream project, but they were taking a huge risk by buying abandoned quarry land in a remote part of the city. I didn't tell anybody. I actually lied. I told them I bought 25 acres and 30 acres and stuff like that. I think a lot of my professional colleagues and professionals who advise us thought I was mad. In the mid-1980s, the Hiranandani brothers ran a textile mill and they decided to take drastic measures with their businesses. We started with uh, textiles and we did a little bit in real estate and soon we were in difficulty with both. We were losing money and we were in debts and one fine day we decided to sell off the textile unit and we were bang into the real estate business. With 250 acres of desolate land in hand, the Hiranandani brothers were desperately in need of a plan to turn it into the satellite township they hoped for. Most of the cities have evolved over a period of time. So the challenge that we face as urban planners is that how do you make that idea of a livable, vibrant city happen in that small timeline that we have. The task of masterminding this transformation went to architect Hafiz Contractor. My architecture is always for a reason. I just don't do anything for the sake of it. Mumbai's architectural history has its pedigree in 19th century British colonial architecture. It is a mix of Victorian, Neo-Gothic and Art Deco styles that gives the city a unique identity. The Hiranandanis tapped Hafiz's creative genius to create the blueprint for an integrated township that would not only counter the infrastructure crunch in the city, but also give it a unique architectural icon. The old style of Mumbai, which you know, all this area is the Gothic style. We did Gothic style, then we said, no, 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 it looks a little bit quite old fashioned. Then we did some uh, art deco, then we did, you know, uh, postmodernist. Then finally, one fine day, huh, I was sitting with Surendra and uh, we said, hey, why don't we do a classical style? Expanding on Mumbai's architectural heritage, the Hiranandanis went in for neoclassical style architecture. The neoclassical style of architecture started in the mid 1800s and has influenced many buildings in Mumbai. The characteristic columns and geometric patterns are a modern adaptation of classical Greek architecture. But the Hiranandanis decided to adapt it for a vertical housing project. We realized that we need to create some style of architecture which be belongs to this place, which makes it, you know, gratifying to the residents and yet has some harmony to it. This style was, in those days, also quite popular in the West. It was considered neoclassical, but nobody had really done it for high rise. The same columns that can be seen in the ancient Greek temples can be seen in Hiranandani gardens, all following strict architectural rules. The height of every column in the township is exactly eight times its diameter. And each column is perfectly cylindrical two thirds of the way and then tapers up to the top. This design not only provides strength and stability to the structure, but also gives Hiranandani Gardens its unique style. The colonnades on the top of the residential complex 
are an ingenious way to mask the eyesore of utilities that usually adorn high-rise buildings. I think some people say it's a cake on the top of the buildings. Other people look at it as topis or hats. But actually, they are water tanks and lift machine rooms disguised under the topi. And I think, you know, it's like going to a derby and where you wear hats on the top, on the face of beautiful ladies. We have the topis on the top of beautiful buildings. The use of domes from the Victorian era Motifs from the Gothic period and elements of Indian design have given Hiranandani Gardens the fame that it enjoys today. In fact, there was a survey. There was a survey taken by Times of India and they asked, what kind of an architectural building you like? And 75% of the people at that time said that we like architecture of Hiranandani Gardens. But the uniqueness of Hiranandani Gardens is not only cosmetic. Each and every building in Hiranandani Gardens, we have a double wall. The double wall design encapsulates an air pocket in between two walls, giving insulation from the elements. In rainy season, uh, the inside wall never gets wet. In summer, the inside wall never gets hot. And in winter, whatever winter we have, it never gets cold. This wall design feature had one more advantage, more floor space. Now there was also an improvement in area because previously everybody used to do nine inch thick external walls. Now from that nine inch is in your FSI. So what I did, I did six inches so you get more carpet area and created another six inches outside, which was not in FSI. So you get more area. 70s and 80s, uh, you know, everything was in shambles. Nobody really knew how to construct. There was no consultant you could hire. So we had to make our own, you know, guidelines for construction. We had to go refer to Australian standards, Singapore standards, European standards, American standards as a reference and created our own reference. Some of the innovations in concrete and wall design used in Hiranandani Gardens are now standard practice in the construction industry. But the construction process was not without its obstacles. There were so many challenges that you can't imagine. There was no water, there was no electricity, there were no proper roads, so it was almost an impossible task. So everything was really a challenge. There was also a challenge for making people believe that we would construct the buildings because it was so far away. In the 80s, early 90s, there was no funding from the organized sector. You had to take own private sector loans at you, you know, absolutely like usury, you know, it was usurious interest rates and you had to su survive with that. The markets were very weak and we selected a location which was for all practical purposes in the boondocks. Despite the challenges, by the early 1990s, the buildings in Hiranandani Gardens were nearing completion. But the real challenge was to convince people to move into Pauai. It was difficult getting even the first residential people to buy apartments over here. Because all they thought was, why? Picnic space. Why should it be a residential space? The Hiranandani brothers would need a radical idea to convince people to move into a remote suburb of the city. By the early 1990s, the Hiranandani brothers had constructed the first buildings in Pauai. But it was hard getting people to move into a remote suburb. The Hiranandani brothers decided that the only way to attract people to Pauai was to provide a quality of life that could not be found anywhere else in Mumbai. 
and the secret was lush green gardens. From day one, we took the name Gardens because we wanted it to be a community, a township within the gardens. The gardens would be the essence of the place. One of the key indicators of a good quality of life in a city is access to green open spaces. While a city like New York keeps more than 25% of its land for recreational use, Mumbai only uses 6%. In a city where space is a big constraint, it is difficult to pitch for free open spaces. But the Hiranandanis made no compensation for their land use. Today, more than half of the township is covered with greenery that is open for recreational use. But taking a dry, arid patch of land in 1991 to lush greenery in the present was not easy. Surendra Hiranandani conducted extensive research into the local flora to fulfill this ambitious dream. So I found this rare book, The Flora of Raigad District, and Mumbai does belong to Raigad. This I got from Botanicals, Royal Botanical Society in Kolkata, this book, a collection of books written in the early 20th century, late 19th century, called The Flora of Bombay, which actually talks about all the indigenous species which were there. You could not rely on anybody, you had to do your own research. All plants in the Hiranandani gardens start their life in their very own nursery, right in the heart of the township. Here, more than 110 horticulturists work tirelessly to maintain the flora in the township. Over the years, they have planted more than 4 lakh saplings of more than 150 different species that cover an area bigger than 28 football fields. Here, at the nursery, research is conducted into new ways of integrating greenery into the urban environment. Like the ficus repens creeper that attaches itself to walls and reduces the temperature of buildings by one degree, thus reducing electricity bills. Or roof gardens that bring greenery into unutilized spaces. The many promenades and gardens across the estate provide a desperately needed green lung to the integrated township. Yeah, I remember my own uh, friends, close friends, whom I was trying to sell one or two apartments to. They said, you've gone crazy. They said, you know, you're going to go bankrupt constructing Pawai. And uh, you forget the gardens. You won't be able to have a single inch of lawn that you will be able to afford at the end of the day. Forget your 50 and 100 acres of gardens that you're talking about. The hard work paid off as families began moving into Hiranandani Gardens, attracted by the opportunity for a healthy lifestyle in a congested city. But gardens need water, and water is a precious commodity in a city like Mumbai. Mumbai consumes 3.3 billion liters of water a day. With a population density of 27,000 people per square kilometer, it is difficult to move water resources into other areas. Mumbai generates 10 billion litres of wastewater, of which only 15% is treated and recycled. But in Hiranandani, 
they have managed to recycle more than 80% of sewage water. In 1989, when it was not fashionable to talk about sewage treatment, you know, all that came in the late 90s, we did 100% sewage recycling. What I wanted to do in the gardens was so huge, there was no way I would get enough water from the municipality. We treat sewage as a resource since 1989. Leading the charge of water recycling in the Hiranandane Gardens Pawai is marine engineer Anant Palkar. Total sewage from Hiranandane Gardens gets collected here in this tank beneath. This is a sewage overflow wall which is letting sewage go to the main sewer lines of BMC. This is generally kept closed and total sewage gets collected here. It is pumped from here for sewage treatment. Around 2 million litres of you know, sewage per day gets collected here and is treated in a sewage treatment plant. 2 million litres, it's around 200 tankers per day. Below every Hiranandani building lies a tank that collects all sewage discharge. The discharge is then pumped into the sewage treatment plant where more than 50% of the water is treated and sent back for use in flushing. The rest of the water is used for gardening purposes. Hiranandani Gardens does not rely on municipal water to keep its plants green. In Mumbai, most of the water going as sewage is treated in a centralized sewage treatment plant of BMCs and they are letting it go to sea. We are blocking the water, whatever water is coming, sewage is coming, we are treating it and reusing it. During summers, not a single drop of water goes out to BMC mains. And in true Hiranandani style, the sewage treatment plant is camouflaged within a functioning park. I don't know a single project in probably in Mumbai at least and Maharashtra where such a large project had its own sewage treatment plant. We were probably the first in the state of a project of this size. Making green spaces available in a city is beneficial not only to its human residents but also to its fauna. Ashish Mantri is an avid photographer and bird watcher who moved to Pawai 15 years ago. Earlier, he traveled 50 kilometers to the nearest bird sanctuary. But today, he finds his treasures right here in Hiranandani Gardens. Can you hear that sound? See, that's a tailor bird. Tweet, 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 tweet. That's a tailor bird. There is a sound which some time back we were hearing of a like somebody knocking on the metal. That was copper smith barbet, which uh, which goes like pop, pop. so creating a metallic sound. So this sound which is that's so uh, normally a sound of a frontal flycatcher. I can see it over there. Oh, it's running away. This is magpie robin, a uh, pied color bird, and uh, it sings very beautifully. Early morning, you can hear its call once it comes into the uh, breeding season. I think a perfect way to wake up. Once you're here, it's not Bombay. It's not a city. It's absolutely natural. And this is what I love. I don't have to travel anywhere. I have to just come in, five minutes walk, I'm inside, inside a forest. Look at this place. And nobody would believe that this is Bombay. Over the years, Ashish has witnessed birds slowly moving into Hiranandani Gardens. I mean, if I start keeping a checklist, which we normally bird lovers, want, uh, bird watchers love to do, I'm sure I would be able to uh, take at least 45 to 50 species, which I've seen over a period of two, three years. These birds are in a way a testament to the success of Hiranandani Gardens in transforming an abandoned piece of land into a micro ecosystem.
but to turn the estate into a true integrated township. Hiranandani Gardens needed to turn a residential complex into a community by investing in social infrastructure. Green pockets in a congested city like Mumbai have a crucial impact on living standards. But these are not the only criteria. When you think about the greatest places in the world and a livable city, quality of life is simply being able to walk on the street very happily and experience art and you know have access to open spaces and parks, uh, have access to high quality of uh, education and culture and hospitals and healthcare. And that's what kind of comes together to make a great livable city. Integrated townships are not complete without their social infrastructure. New developments have to create a miniature economy to allow people to work and play without tapping into the resources of the city. Mumbai's linear topography meant that people traveled from the suburbs in the north to the commercial centers in the south, creating a very linear pattern of commuting. This mass movement of people every day places immense stress on the transportation resources of the city. Mumbai's trains make more than 2,600 trips a day, carrying more than 6 million commuters. But yet, during peak time, more than 8 people are crammed into each square meter. Travel is a major stress inducer in Mumbai. To counter the congestion, corporates began moving into the suburbs of Mumbai. For Hiranandani Gardens to become a true integrated township, it will have to bridge the distances between living and working in Mumbai. We really believe that commuting was becoming a problem in Mumbai. Though we started as a residential area, the need for commercial was not there in those days. But over a period of time, as the city grew, the needs for commercial in the community grew too. Attracted by the quality of the surroundings, multinationals began approaching the Hiranandanis to provide commercial space within their estate. One of them was the multinational company, Crystal. You know, the kind of work we do, uh, our raw materials only people. We wanted to make sure that people, when they come to office, uh, they're happy, uh, they smile, and they enjoy working here. So that was one of our basic uh, criteria, that if we move into an office, a uh, new office, we will take care of all these aspects. The Hiranandanis built the company's headquarters in a state-of-the-art, energy-efficient building that conserves energy by using smart architecture. Initially, when we moved here, there were some, you know, there were skeptics who said, oh, moving to Poway. But what we've seen is actually when people come in here, uh, they, the working environment is such, uh, the productivity actually goes up. Uh, they like coming to the office, that's one good aspect. Today, Hiranandani offers more than 5 million square feet of office space that has been lapped up by some of the world's biggest multinational companies. I think integrated townships could be the way forward. If city planners can plan that effectively, I think it'll be good for everybody. It'll be good for the employees, it'll be good for the companies. Uh, it'll improve efficiency, it'll improve productivity. An integrated township has the responsibility of providing access to healthcare and education in a city that has restricted resources of its own. The existing health care for the city was planned in the 1980s for a population of 7 million people. But today, it is being used by 18 million people. While the World Health Organization recommends one hospital bed for every 550 people, Mumbai has one hospital bed for every 3,000 people. At Hiranandani Gardens, Powai, 
there is one hospital bed for every hundred residents. Since its inception in 2004, the Hiranandani Hospital has been serving the community with its 240-bed multi-speciality hospital. Where you have ample greenery and garden space, you are enthused to walk. So therefore, you will actually keep yourself fit. And you may not require the hospital. If you're, you know, healthy and you are, you know, uh, exercising yourself regularly, you don't need me. So I think uh, the community, the way it has been designed, the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, the social infrastructure that we've put in, I think it's adding a huge value. To strengthen the social infrastructure of the integrated township, the Hirandanis also invested in two schools with more than 2,000 students enrolled in them. While only 25% of schools in Mumbai have access to playgrounds, here at Hiranandani, the children have access to wide open spaces for their development. We have three playgrounds and uh, we don't look out for any other ground to hire for our sports day like the schools in Mumbai. They have to do because they don't, they have that space as a constraint. Lack of space definitely does not allow a child to bloom. You may have the best of teachers, the best of faculties, the best of, uh, uh, best of curriculum in place. You must remember that a sound mind and a sound body and we follow that motto which is the motto of our school, Mensano Corpora Sano. And uh, the whole ambience, the greenery, the space has helped them to live up to that motto. Situation normal? Normal, normal. Location? Circle, sir. Hiranandani Gardens employs a crack team of commandos who provide round the clock surveillance for the estate. Yes, sir. We have approximately 300 acres of area. There are 27 commercial zones and 47 residential zones. Minimum for 25,000 to 30,000 people are public here. For their security, we have our commando group here. We continue to 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 continue. Today, the security team is investigating a recent spate in manhole thefts around the property. There are some manuals here, which have been stolen from the past. So, we have kept a person in the vigilance for that. The commander is in civil dress. He will give attention to the activities there. In the typical Bombay language, they are fielding. And in the professional language, they are vigilance. Apart from staking out for criminals, the commandos have access to CCTV cameras placed strategically all across the estate. Sanjay and his team have nabbed many gangs that have operated in the area and have received bravery awards from the Mumbai police. The residents can be assured that Sanjay's hawk eye will keep them safe. Hawaii is an integrated township. It's not residential, it's not commercial, it's integrated residential commercial both. You'll find it vibrant, all times of the day and night, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's hugely successful. People love it. And it's not only people who are staying or working over here who come to Main Street, but there are people from the entire community around Pawai who also flock over here. And the true litmus test of any integrated township can be found in the many homes they have built the Dudeja family was one of the first to move into the township and probably will be the last to leave. When we all get into 
last 14 no. years. 16 years, no? 14 years, no? 16 98 years. onwards, 15, 15, 15, 15 plus. There is no open space like Hawaii. I don't think any other uh, suburb has such open space. It's very safe also. Safe. Yeah, safe, safe too. Very peaceful Security. when you go around and the gentry you see around the people, they are very positive and uh, it's a good place to live. No, now we don't want to shift anywhere. Else. We don't. We don't want to shift anywhere. Many other uh, builders have tried to copy this example, but they have not come near to what Pawai has been able to build. Hiranandanis have been able to build in Pawai. Hiranandani Gardens, Pawai has not only impacted the lives of the people living in the residential complex, but transformed the entire suburb of Powai that was once a mere picnic spot. I do hope that India will see an emergence of you know, leaders from civil society and private sector who can create those integrated uh, communities and spaces that not just create a fabulous quality of life, but also ensure that we're building communities that are inclusive and sustainable. I think ultimately, you have to end your life with some amount of self-satisfaction. At the end of the day, you can't take it all. And what we have done really is to try to see that as we have earned we have given back to society. We have created a template for good construction, definitely. That was our original intention, but also an attitude to how you go about doing things. You know, individual family level who actually lives here or the people who work here, you know, they, they, how they can, you know, live in a place which is uh, conducive to growth of human society, the betterment of a city. Hiranandani Gardens, Powai is a good example of how integrated townships are changing the way people relate with the cities of the future. <laughs>